Do you self-publish books on Amazon? If so, then you've probably noticed it's gotten really competitive over the past few years. Hi, my name is Steve Scott. I help creatives, online entrepreneurs, and high-level achievers get real results with their work. And in this video, I'm going to talk about five specific strategies that you can use to stay competitive on Amazon in 2019 and for many years to come. Let's get to it. Now, I want to give you a quick backstory before I dive into the rest of the video. And this will give you a solid reason why you should pay attention to what I'm saying. So in early 2012, that is when I got into self-publishing. And like a lot of people, I just wrote a book or two here and there. I didn't really pay too much to this business model. But it was late 2012, early 2013, that I decided to dive into this business uh, model full time. I learned a lot during this time. In fact, I kind of became a little bit uh, self-publishing famous for some experiences that I shared. And around 2014, 15, and 16, my business really took off. And I actually even created a course about it. And this was just a model that I sh um, talked about with a lot of people about how it was a great business model. That said, in about 2017 and 18, I took a step back from self-publishing to basically focus on spending time with my son. What's interesting is that while I wasn't working that much in self-publishing, I was still making a full-time income from that. And it just led me to a couple of key conclusions about how to stay competitive in the current self-publishing landscape while also not working yourself uh, to death with this particular business model. And that is the five strategies I'm going to talk about now. So you might be wondering what has changed with self-publishing. Well, there are a few things that have happened over the past few years. First off, it has gotten ultra competitive, which I've just talked about. The fact that uh, myself and other people shared their positive business experience with this business model, that attracted a lot of writers, which has made it super competitive over the past few years. Unfortunately, the big downside to this is this has also attracted uh, people who are uh, spammers, who um, basically just um, stuff their books full of just nonsense, nonsense content to take advantage of the Kindle Unlimited program, which I'll talk about in a second. And there's also just outright uh, plagiarism. People will just take the work of others, um, just change a word or two around, and they'll try to take full credit for that. And there's a really good article that I'll post in the uh, description box of this video. And if you wanna learn more about this, definitely go out and read that. There has also been changes to what is called the Kindle Unlimited program. And that is Amazon's kind of Netflix um, one monthly charge where you get to read all you want uh, during the course of the month. Now, as authors, this was a lucrative um, aspect of the business for a couple of years until they changed to a pages read model where a lot of people saw a major source of their income slash. And actually, on a personal level, this happened with me. I would say that was uh, July 2015. While I was on my honeymoon, uh, they made changes to the Kindle Unlimited program, and I had to do a lot of scrambling ever since then to uh, kind of redo my whole business model. What has also happened is uh, something called lovingly called review apocalypse. Basically, Amazon has gone out and removed a lot of reviews on a lot of books, and oftentimes there's no rhyme or reason why they just remove a whole swaths of reviews, but that has also hurt a lot of authors. Another major change is Amazon has slowly morphed into a quote-unquote pay-to-play uh, platform. This is similar to Facebook and Google where you have to run ads in order for people to see whatever you're selling. Now, it used to be where you could just uh, put a book on Amazon and take advantage of their algorithm and you could get a lot of eyeballs on your books. And what is Amazon is starting to do now is they're starting to strongly emphasize their Amazon marketing services or AMS ads to get people to click on your ad. So in other words, you have to pay money if you want people to read your books. Now, this is a lot of bad news and I recognize that um, this has taken a lot of people out of the self-publishing business, but myself and others are still doing really well on this platform. It's just we had to uh, create a number of strategies to stay competitive in this current landscape. And let's get to those particular strategies right now. Number one, practice the fundamentals. This is the same advice that I gave five years ago in 2014, and it's the same advice I would wanna to give uh, today, and that is make sure you're practicing the fundamentals. So there are a few key strategies you should make sure you're following whenever you publish a book. So first off, you wanna make sure that you identify a topic that sells, and that means just going on Amazon and making sure that there's an actual audience for that. And a quick shorthand is you wanna look on what's called the Amazon bestsellers rank, and that's ASBR, and that's just in the product details, just go 
down into Amazon and make sure that it has a number 30,000 or less and you want, want to find a couple of books that have this. This is a topic I will go into in future videos. Um, you also want to make sure that you create a good hook. You want to have a headline that grabs people's attention and you also want to have a benefit-driven subheadline. This is just something that you're promising a powerful benefit on the cover of your book and you're making sure that you deliver on that content within the book. Uh, in that same vein, you want to make sure you have a good book cover. You want to make sure it's just something that stands out in the crowd. And also, uh, obviously, you want a book that reads well. You want to provide uh, as much value to the end reader as possible. Another core fundamental strategy is you want to make sure you're building an audience and specifically building an audience off of Amazon. So that could be through a podcast or a blog or a uh, YouTube channel. You want to make sure that you you have a group of people who like what you have to say and will basically support whatever book you come out with in the future. And the final fundamental, and this is a fundamental that I would recommend for pretty much any business you have, is to build an email list. And email lists are great for getting reviews, uh, for having people support your work, and especially when you launch a book, it's important to get those initial uh, book sales and people leaving reviews. Number two, identify your 80-20. If you've read any of my books, then you know I talk a lot about the 80-20 principle, or also known as the uh, Pareto principle. Simply put, the 80-20 rule states that 80% of your results often come from 20% of your efforts. So as an example, in 2018, my book catalog hit over 100 books. What's interesting is 50% of my income came from just three books. So out of 100, only three books generate over the lion's share of my income. Your goal here is to identify the few key books and the few key strategies of your business and just double down, triple down, and quadruple down on those few strategies and focus on that instead of all the other noise that's out there as far as writing and marketing books. When you do an 80-20 analysis, you wanna ask yourself a few key questions. So you wanna ask yourself, what type of books do really well with my audience? Where do most of my reviews come from? What type of uh, book covers attract the most amount of readers? What is the marketing strategy that helps me sell the most books? And if you're following the AMS ads uh, strategy, what type of keywords lead to the most clicks and impressions and uh, overall earnings? Which leads us to number three, master Amazon ads. Now remember before when I said that Amazon has become a pay to play uh, platform? This is really similar to what Google and Facebook did, and I feel that this is only going to get worse, and that is you have to become someone who is comfortable with spending money in order to get book readers. That means you have to master what is called the AMS or Amazon Marketing Services platform. This is a topic that requires a lot of explanation, and I'll probably create a number of videos in the future talking about AMS, but the point is, you wanna spend a good amount of time every single day, at least 10 to 15 minutes every single day, running ads, seeing how other ads run, doing keyword research, and just basically getting comfortable with the AMS or Amazon Marketing Services platform. But if you wanna jump in right now with AMS ads, I would recommend a couple of core tactics. First off, you wanna pick the sponsored ads, and I know there are a couple of other types of ads you can run on Amazon, but I find that sponsored ads uh, leads to the most impressions, clicks, and sales. You also want to go deep with your keyword research. So I would recommend looking up um, niche specific keywords. So if you have a book about saving money, you wanna try and find as many keywords related to saving money. You also want to target authors in your uh, niche or genre. You also want to target book titles. So pretty much my keyword lists at this point are, for a few of my top books, there are in like the three to 4,000 keywords for just one particular book. So I try to have as much volume with my keywords as possible. Another core strategy is you want to start your bidding around 30 cents. I find that's kind of the sweet spot of spending enough money to get impressions and clicks while also not uh, blowing the bank on one particular keyword. So I'll start an ad at 30 cents and then I'll just make adjustments along the way. And that leads to the final tactic is you wanna go frequently inside your ads. You wanna make adjustments and uh, actually increase the bids on the keywords that are starting to take off and lead to sales. And then you wanna basically lower the bids or even kill the keyword of ones that just aren't selling books or just cost too much to actually generate 
a book sale. Now again, I will be spending a lot of time in future videos about AMS ads, but until then, I would um, recommend educating yourself on this topic. I know Brian Meeks has a couple of really good books on the subject that he actually uh, helped me get started way back when with AMS ads. So I'll, I would go check out his stuff. I know Brian Cohen, also another friend of mine, he does a lot of interesting things with um, AMS ads as well. And I'll leave a link to his podcast and a couple other things that he's put together. But the bottom line is you want to practice AMS ads and you want to get good at this platform because it's not going away and the free ride with Amazon is definitely uh, slowly, slowly eroding over time. Number four, add journals to your catalog. You can now create print books on the KDP platform instead of CreateSpace. And what gets me really excited is you can now just create just a print book without the ebook or audiobook version and then run ads on it through AMS. And what this is really valuable for you as a writer is you can take your best content. So if you have a best selling book, you can repurpose some of the, the better parts of your book and turn it into journal form and help your readers take action on your content. And this is just yet another way that you could repurpose stuff that's just already lying around on your computer and create another asset through that. And this is something that I did with my writing partner, Barry Davenport. We took some of our mindfulness content, uh, created a few prompts and put it into step-by-step -step journal format. We edited a few books in 2017 and 18 and also in 2019. And we now have a couple of valuable assets that basically is repurposed content from our other books. And that is yet another way you can add to your catalog without creating too much uh, extra work in your life. And that leads us to number five, build additional sources of income. So remember what I just said, your content is an asset. It has value beyond just selling it in book format. If you have a lot to say about a subject, you can turn this content into other different mediums that also help you generate additional income and build an audience. And also remember, Amazon will always do what's in Amazon's best interest. So I, I'm pretty confident that eventually they'll change something in 2019, 2020, 2021, so on and so forth. They will keep changing the rules and perhaps in a few years, KDP might not be a viable business model. So you always want to keep thinking outside the box and finding additional ways to leverage the content that you've created. So as an example, in 2016, I started to notice what Amazon was doing with changing the rules and doing stuff that wasn't always in the best interest of authors. So instead of just continuing to write books, I started to build an authority site using some of the same content that I had in my books. And I actually built a whole second source of income just by repurposing some of the content, putting it on a blog and leveraging SEO traffic or Google traffic. So if you have content that's already sitting there in book form, I would recommend leveraging this content and repurposing it in a number of ways. You could create a blog or an authority site. You could offer a coaching or consulting service related to your content. You could turn the book content into a podcast or uh, even a YouTube video. And uh, if you continue to watch this YouTube channel, you'll notice that a lot of the videos that I create is largely pulled from book form. And that leads us to a kind of final statement about uh, leveraging your content. And that is everyone has their own personal pr preference for how they receive content. Myself, I'm more of a book reader, but I know there are a lot of people out there who love listening to podcasts and love watching YouTube videos. And oftentimes these audiences won't really cross over. So a book reader will often just be a book reader. A blog reader will often be just a blog reader. Uh, people who listen to podcasts stick, uh, stick to listen to podcasts and YouTube people stick to watching YouTube videos. And this was almost an amazing eye-opening thought that I, I only recently had, which is kind of sad. The fact that you could take the same content, put it in a different version, and you could build a whole new audience. So not only can you generate income from this whole new platform, but hopefully you can take some of that audience and use it to sell more books down the road. So there you have it. Five simple strategies that you can use to stay competitive in 2019. And if you would like to learn more about self-publishing and just my experiences with building a solid fundamental self-publishing business, then I do have a course on this subject and you can find a link to that course in the description box of this video. Self-publishing books on Amazon is a topic I will be covering extensively in this YouTube channel. So if you'd like to learn more about this subject, I would recommend subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell. And that will let you become one of the first people who will see the next video that I have about this particular subject. Now, I would love to hear back from you. 
How do you stay competitive with self-publishing in 2019? Have you tried Amazon ads before? Did those Amazon ads work? And is there anything that I missed that you personally use to stay competitive? I would love to hear all these thoughts and more, so please leave a comment on this video. But if you are a private person, I also have a Google survey form in the link of this video, and you could just click on the link, send me a question, and hopefully I will be able to answer that question in a future video. Well, thank you for watching, and I will talk to you next time.